Hello! In this video I am going to customize a new type of doll. It's a Barbie Extra Mini. I haven't seen anybody customizing dolls yet, but I think it's a big loss, because in my opinion these dolls are perfect for this purpose. Their heads are big and face features are not very pronounced, which makes them perfect for doing a face up and it's good especially for people who are just learning how to customize dolls. Also, I find it cool that despite their small size, their bodies are fully articulated, so for me as a doll artist, these dolls are pure treasure. However, as a doll collector, I find them questionable, because the design of their outfits and accessories could be way better. Of course, I'm not expecting much from the dolls of this size, but here Mattel did a couple of good attempts, like they gave this doll nice and detailed jewelry, the face is cute, no molded clothes, the hair is amazing, this doll has a lot of hair, the head is well rooted. Her boots are very detailed, but you can't see it under this layer of unnecessary glitter. I was able to appreciate them only after I removed this glitter with nail polish remover. I was positively surprised, but then sad from seeing how a good idea and design was ruined with this random decision. And in general I feel like Mattel just took some random clothes and accessories and put them together without bothering to make the clothes and styles match. Just look at her without her clothes and ugly accessories, such a cutie. I love the body shape so much, the joints are so nice and smooth, I couldn't stop playing with this doll. and. I wish this brand would succeed so we could get more of these dolls. <sighs> okay, let's leave it, let's leave the sad part and start customizing, because that's why you are here, right? First of all, I need to remove her factory hair. I like how they made her side cut and head brown, as if it's her roots are showing. Such a nice detail. Because her neck hole is too small, I had to cut her head open to remove the rest of the hair from the inside. I noticed that Mattel is not using that nasty glue to fix the hair anymore, and I hope they will continue doing it this way with new Monster High dolls as well, so collectors won't have to suffer with trying to fix that greasy hair the dolls get over time. I'll definitely buy some of these dolls, so we can check together how they are made. Ok, now the head is ready, and while doing her face up, I'd like to give you some information about the character I am making today. I learned about Anya from memes and after seeing how funny and cute this character is, I've decided to watch the anime as well, just because of this kid. Anya is a kid with telepathic abilities who was adopted by the main protagonist of this anime, Agent Twilight, who needed to create a fake family for his undercover work. <laughs> This part felt a bit sad for me, because for him this kid is just a tool and I was wondering what's going to happen to the kid after he is done with his mission. Besides, in the beginning of the anime they told us that there were a few families trying to adopt Anya but then returning her back to the orphanage and she was already traumatized by this. So now Anya is doing her best to impress her father and help him with his mission just to deserve his love and make sure he will keep her. However, I like how Agent Twilight treats her. For his mission he needs Anya to enter one of the top schools and become successful in there. Anya knows about it as she is a telepath, but feels under pressure because of it. But the guy himself treats her nicely, trying to help her with patience, never judges her if she can't achieve something and just offers her to try something else in order to find something she would like to do and be good at. You can also say that he is prioritizing the kid's comfort over his mission, because he was ready to risk everything just to protect Anya's feelings when one of the school juries tried to use her dead mother to manipulate kids' feelings. Right, this anime was supposed to be a comedy, but I think I just ruined the vibe.
In the anime, Anya has very expressive cute face with huge eyes, but I'm working with a 3D object, so I had to make her eyes a bit more realistic, but I still tried to keep them close to the anime style by keeping the form of the irises and reflections. I think she came out looking a bit more adult than I wanted, but still very cute and pretty. Reminds me of my top doll. Maybe because her eyes are green as well, I don't know. Next up is her hair. I'm going to use this pink acrylic yarn. Unfortunately, I couldn't find chunky yarn in the right color, so I had to suffer with splitting these thin threads. This yarn worked not worse than chunky yarn, just took me way more time to turn it into the wefts. When you are choosing yarn for those hair, it's important to look for the soft yarn that's easy to iron, so in the end you will get smooth hair. Usually thin yarn is not soft enough, but this time I got lucky and it worked out well. I tried to use the wefts as efficient as possible by splitting a part of them into halves and using shorter hair where it's possible, like on her bangs and on the back of her head, where the hair is naturally shorter. I still have got not enough hair and had to brush some more though.
When the glue is completely dry, I can style her hair with a razor for eyebrows and a wet toothbrush. Next up is her outfit. Anya is wearing a simple black dress, but since this is the first time I'm working with this type of doll, I had to make a basic pattern first. I covered her body with plastic wrap first, and then with masking tape, in order to get a solid base to draw on. I mark all of the important lines, like her chest, waist, hip lines, the middle of the front, the middle of the back, side and shoulder seams, neck and armholes. Then I transferred the pattern I've got on paper and modified it in order to achieve the right silhouette. In order to make a pattern for sleeves, I usually take measurements from the doll and apply them directly to the blueprint. My little invention is to use a paper stripe with squares as a measuring tape, because it's thin, flexible and has accurate marking. And you can also mark your measurements on it. The pattern is done. I got rid of the shoulder seams as well, just to reduce the thickness of the dress in this area. And since I used polyester fabric, I can use a lighter to melt all of the cuts and secure the edges of the details. Oftentimes you can see doll clothes without shoulder seams, but never on human clothes. And there are at least two reasons why it works on dolls and doesn't work on humans. The first reason is that combining the back and front panels like this creates a huge pattern with a complicated form, which makes it hard to fit into a sheet of fabric and it increases the amount of wastes. But the most important reason is that in human clothes it's important to keep in mind the direction of the threads and make sure that the threads of fabric are going parallel to the middles of the front and back on your dress pattern because otherwise fabric might get deformed under its own weight once the dress is worn. And the greater the angle you have, the more chance of deformation you have. At an angle of 45 degrees, the deformation is the worst, and for example in the dress I make today, this is exactly the angle I've got on her back panel. If I did this on a human, the whole dress would look like a mess, no matter if the pattern was good or not. But dolls are so small and the details are so tiny that they simply don't have enough weight to get deformed. And that's why the rules are different. However, even in human clothing there are exceptions, especially when it goes about high fashion. Some people see negatives, but some people can also turn them into opportunities. And that's exactly what a French designer Madeleine Vionnet did. 
She was born in 1876 and established her first fashion house in 1912. Back in that time, people didn't know about Jersey or Elastan yet and were pretty much limited in how tight a dress could fit on a human and still be comfortable to wear. And that's when Madame Vianney developed so-called bias cut. It's when the pattern is placed on fabric under a 45 degrees angle, which makes a woven fabric elastic. This technique is really hard to work with, but that's what made the name of Madeleine Vionnet stay in history. And by the way, I used bias cut on the dress of my Lady Dimitrescu doll when I wanted the sleeves to sit smooth and tight, but still keep the arms articulated. I'm still so damn proud of that dress, can you tell? I remember back then it took me like 6 days to come up with the end result you saw in that video. Comparing to that, Anya's dress is very simple of course, but still elegant. In the cartoon she is also wearing a pair of white socks. I made them out of white biflex fabric and used an elastic with lace on top of them. So cute! Anya is also wearing two hair ornaments, which I'd like to make out of pins and epoxy sculpt. I stick pins into these foam mushrooms to use them as a pottery wheel. But the real reason why I use them is that the round form of a mushroom cap will also create a round gap under the ornaments, which will make them sit nicely on the doll's head, unlike this guy's head for example. Ta-da! Two perfect cones we've got here. Now let's draw the details and varnish them. Punk, punk, so elegant. <laughs> smart, smart and elegant. But the tastiest thing I left for the end. It's Anya's best friend, but also the tiniest plushie I've ever made, Mr. Chimera. I tried to make a blueprint or at least some decent plan for this plushie, at least to be able to make her size match Anya. Still had to adjust a lot of things, but it's always easier if you have at least some guidance. And for this plushie I'm going to reuse this LOL surprise hoodie and this Ever After High mermaid dress. They fit perfectly from the color and texture and were laying around without a purpose, so why not? According to Greek mythology, Chimera was a hybrid creature composed of different animal parts. Usually it had both lion and goat heads, but in the anime they combined it in one and made it like a lion with horns and hooves. They kept a snake for a tail though, but also added wings. I think Greeks depicted them without wings, but in modern art I oftentimes see chimeras with wings. As a person who is rooting for as many details as possible, I'm only happy that they went for this design.
the details were so tiny that it got very hard to build them together. I had to do all of the seams by hand and redo some parts several times before I could achieve the result I wished for. This little challenge only gave me motivation though. The tongue also came out a bit tilted to the side, but I think it only gives the snake a bit more of an edge. I've got edge! Hear about as edgy as a satsuma! Now both Anya and Mr. Chimera are done, and let's see the end result photos. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to this channel and press the bell button. Thanks for watching, bye!